that the highest king would welcome me. I was lost, but he brought me his love for me. Oh, his love for me. Through the sunset, free, always free. Thank you, God, that we are your children, and we, you have uh, done a work in our lives, Lord, and we just give you all of the thanks for that work, Lord. And you have set us free, Lord, to serve you, and you have called us your people, Lord. And we just ask you, your presence to be with us now, Lord, as we, um, as these uh, our brothers and sisters enter the waters of baptism, Lord. Um, you said, go into all the world and preach the gospel, making disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And you are with us to the end of the age. And Lord, we just want to thank you for that today, Lord. Thank you for your word. Thank you for the truth of that. And we will take a step of faith into that world today, Lord, with our brothers and sisters, Lord. We will step in, as it were, in and see the reality, Lord, of this fulfilled this very day. We thank you, as we heard earlier, even the angels rejoice in heaven over one sinner that repents, Lord. And we thank you that heaven is looking down, Lord. And, and we have a, a cloud of witnesses, according to Hebrews 12, Lord. There is a cloud of witnesses looking down. And rejoicing with us, Lord, for this moment and this time. Lord, you've ordained it, and we are just blessed to be part of it. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 So who's uh, someone giving a testimony? Yeah. So um, I believe Shay and Kia and the sister Amy. Yeah. So in any particular order, Amy, Kia, or Shay. Stand in the center, there's no need to be over there. Okay, thank you. <laughs> um, I brought um, Kayla here with me, she's, she'll be reading for me um, from Ezekiel 36, verse 25 to 28. Want to read, read for it? I will sprinkle clean water upon you. And you shall be clean from all your uncleanness. And from all your idols I will cleanse you. A new heart I will give you. And a new spirit I will put within you. And I will remove from your body the heart of stone. 
and give you a heart of flesh. I will put my spirit within you and make you follow my statutes and be careful to observe my ordinances. Then you shall live in the land that I gave to your ancestors and you shall be my people and I will be your God. Um. <laughs> Hi everyone. <laughs> So uh, I'd, I'd like to uh, think that this is all, like I made that, this decision, but it really, it isn't a decision that I made. I, I feel as though I was chosen, uh, and that God came for me and pulled me up from wherever I was. Um, for the longest time in my life, I, I thought I was in charge of my own destiny. I thought I was in charge of my own life. I thought I was in charge of protecting my family, providing to my wife and my kids. But honestly, I'm not able to do that on my own. Uh, it's a really hard job if you want to do it right. Um, so first of all, I'm grateful um, for the church. Um, this is a good day. Um, please give me a moment. <laughs> please give me a moment. <laughs> I plan to keep it short, but if it's like there's more things coming out. <laughs> Preach it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, um, this is all God's doing. Uh, I know who I am, and I know the thoughts that I've thought. I know what's in my heart, but for God to decide that I am, I'm worthy of his love. Uh, I'm worthy of his provision. Uh, I still don't understand it. Um, but it's okay even if I don't understand it. Um, I'm just grateful. Thank you everyone for coming. Wow. Amen. That's it. That's it. Thanks, Kayla. with my verses from 1 Timothy 1 verses uh, 15 and 16. Um, here's a trustworthy saying that deserves full acceptance. Jesus Christ came into the world to save sinners, of whom I am the worst. But for that very reason I was shown mercy, so that in me, the worst of sinners, Jesus Christ, might display his immense patience as an example for those who would believe in him and receive eternal life. So, like my husband, I'll keep it short and sweet. Um, I grew up in the church, so since I was very little, I knew um, enough to know that I needed Christ. Um, but I feel as though it was only really in the last year or so that I, I really felt um, a drawing and a pulling to really confirm whether or not I was really a believer. And that led through to a time of really um, seeking the Lord, reading scripture, trying to figure out, is what I believe true or is it just what I was taught to believe and just what feels comfortable to believe? Um, and it was actually in church when Nympha was preaching and she said that at one point the Lord spoke to her and said, do you really believe it was me speaking to you? And at that moment I had the same sense to say, do you really believe that it was me speaking to you and calling you? And I said, yes, I do believe that. And so then at that moment, I feel like I became a Christian only a year ago. And so this is, I feel, a natural outflowing in obedience to that call. So I'll finish off then with um, another verse, which is ultimately our hope, I believe. Um, and it is in... The book of Jude, just hold on. Uh, verse 24, and so it says, To, who, to whom we is, who is able to keep you from stumbling and to present you before his glorious presence without fault and with great joy, to the only God our Father, uh, the only God our Savior, be glory, majesty, power, and authority through Jesus Christ our Lord. 
before all ages, now and forevermore. Amen. 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 I just uh, thought of the scripture um, there, you know, it says, if you believe in your heart and you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, you will be saved. I think that's in Romans 10. And, um, you know, that's just a testimony of people all the time, you know, that the Holy Spirit has shown them their need for Christ and they have put their faith and their trust in their confidence in that through the call of God. And God doesn't lie, you know. He changes our hearts. Yeah. He's done it for me 30 years ago, you know. And he's still doing it. Because we heard this morning in church, you know, this gospel of the kingdom has been preached for generation and generation and generation. And it's still being preached. And it will be when we're gone. Yeah. And I was thinking also earlier there, I was thinking, I was coming off the back of, just at the end of um, what you shared in Psalm 68, you know. It says there at the end of that verse, you know, it says, you know, the Lord puts the lonely in families, you know. And, you know, I know as a Christian, I know where I came from. And I know that, you know, God put me in a family. I was very broken, but God done a work in my life. And it's not about me today, but it's about the testimony of what God does in our lives. And I was thinking also, another verse came and it said, you know, Peter was there and he said, uh, it, it was a challenge to Peter. He said, Lord, we've left everything for you and Jesus said you know what he who has left father mother houses lands for me we gain it in this life and in eternal life and Nikki I know Nikki was going to mention a verse this morning where Jesus said as you sung it there you know he said if I go I will come back in it you know and I will take you to myself for in my father's house there is many mansions Amen. you know there's a place there for us after we die and Peter mightn't have fully understood what the cost would be on his life yeah. to follow Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. But Jesus covenanted it and promised him, if you give up your life for me and you repent of your sin, you will have eternal life. And you will have a family. And I can bear witness, and I'm sure most of us here can, that you know when God calls you out of the world and he makes you his own, he makes you his child. He places you in a family. And I've been in his family for over 30 years. And he's done some amazing things through his family for me and me to them. Amen. But generally, I can't even express it. And I, I see it here again, you know, called into the family. And even as I look down and even in church this morning, I see God's family, yeah. you know, because God doesn't have grandchildren. He has children. None of us are born a Christian. None of us are given Christ at, at birth, right? You can be given a religion, but it can be Christless. Yes. It, to understand the gospel is really the work of Christ. And you know, as I often say, look, the wind is moving, the trees around you. Can you see the wind? No. But you can see the effects. And even in the testimonies, you know that the Holy Spirit is the effective one he changes the heart and yeah. jesus said that in john 3 he said you know you you don't see the spirit but you see the results yeah. and and we just praise god for that Amen. and and I, I just so great to be here and michael if you've anything to add or yeah, there's one, one, more. one more absolutely yeah. yes <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> have faith sister yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's you're among you're among family. You're okay. Yes. <laughs> okay. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, I'm Amy. Um, I'm Tracy, as everyone knows by now. To be honest, I didn't want to do a testimony. Um, Firstly, because of my anxiety for speaking publicly. Secondly, because I know my, my testimony is very big and my family can attest to it. And I know that I'm here just because of, you know, my, the prayers from my family, my mom and my dad especially. Um, I've been through a lot. Um, and that's why when, when Shay spoke about the baptism, I didn't even ask if I could... You know, I, couldn't, I didn't ask, I just said I'm getting baptized as well, and the asking was secondary. Um, 
I think for me when things changed was about two years ago when I moved to Saudi Arabia and you know in a place where it's illegal to serve the Lord that's where I met him same as Shay I grew up in the church um, I know right from wrong I know what I needed to do but I went through such a breaking in Saudi you know that I needed to leave myself Amy everything I believed in I needed to leave it behind and I, I trusted solely on on God and and you know what he what he wanted me to do and um, so I think that's where things changed for me um, and things have been getting better since then so that's why I'm here to make the public declaration in front of the church um, as hard as this is um, but yeah I'm ready for for my life and what's to come I'm just taken back again to Larry's testimony this morning, you know. You know, the woman, she was broken because of a sin, you know. And she washed Jesus' feet with her tears. And Jesus said, who is forgiven much, loves much. Yeah. And, and it's, again, it's just testimony to God and his word. Um, there's another verse <laughs> coming to my heart. And it says, you know, in Isaiah 61, you know, Jesus stood up in the temple and he began to share that he's going to begin his ministry. And he stood up and he opened the scroll and he read from it. He read from Isaiah and he said, I've come to heal up, heal the broken heart yes. and to set the captives free. And, you know, sometimes we got to go low. We got to be broken. We got to be at the end of ourselves. Yes. And then he just steps in and you say, oh, you're here. Lord Jesus, you're here. And you know, he's compassionate. He's slow to anger and abounding in love. Yes. Just like the psalmist said. Amen. What did he say? It's written about me in the psalms and in the prophets. And he fulfills this. He is absolutely a wonderful God and a wonderful savior. And that was, I, I can see the depth in that without you even having to say too much. But God knows the depth, you know, yes. and he's there. Oh, it's just Amen. powerful. It's glory to him. Amen. It's yeah. all glory to yeah. him. You know? So, Mike. Amen. Amen. Great stuff. Uh, now, I was going to ask to borrow your glasses there, Eddie. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure we all get the same sort of eyesight at this age of our lives. <laughs> so, um, obviously, uh, there's a baptismal text, which is from Acts chapter 8, which is the Ethiopian eunuch. not going to read too much of it, but, you know, basically... Uh, they, he had been coming from Jerusalem and was reading from the scroll of Isaiah. Okay, so I'm going to read this section. Acts chapter 8, verse 20 says, An angel of the Lord spoke to Philip, Get up and go south to the road that goes down from Jerusalem to desert Gaza. So he got up and went. There was an Ethiopian man, a eunuch and high official of Candace, queen of the Ethiopians, who was in charge of her entire treasury. He had come to worship in Jerusalem and was sitting in his chariot on his way home, reading the prophet Isaiah aloud. The spirit, of, the spirit told Philip, go and join that chariot. When Philip ran up to it, he heard him reading the prophet Isaiah, because he was reading out loud, as you know, and said, do you understand what you're reading? How can I? He said unless someone guides me. Mm. So he invited Philip to come up and sit with him. Now the scripture passage he was reading was this. He was led like a sheep to the slaughter, and as a lamb is silent before its shearer, so he does not open his mouth. In his humiliation, justice was denied him. Who will describe his generation, for his life is taken from the earth? The eunuch replied to Philip, very strange way of asking it. He says, I ask you, who is the prophet saying this about? Himself or another person? That shows you he didn't have a clue. Who is this about? Mm. Philip must have thought, you give me a good springboard here to jump in, <laughs> right? <laughs> so Philip proceeded to tell him the good news about Jesus, beginning from that scripture. So he used that scripture to jump off or jump mm. into the conversation. So it's he was actually quoting from Isaiah 53, which we've just heard. And um, 
he starts expounding the scriptures and this is one thing uh, one thing that's lacking in many of our much of our preaching is no expounding of the scriptures just read the text and that's it but we need to go into the depth like we try to do and expound upon it and bring out the meaning of the text so that the person reading can understand what is being said and to explain well this is this this is that's where it all joins like what was done this morning trying to join all the bits and pieces together okay and there's a lot involved in that so it says here, so Philip proceeded to tell him the good news about Jesus, beginning from that scripture. As they were traveling down the road, they came to some water. The eunuch said, look, there's water in the desert, right? What would keep me from being baptized? And that's a good question for anyone who has not been baptized. What would keep you from being baptized? Oh, I don't believe. Or I, I'm not ready yet. I don't like getting wet. I don't like the cold water. <laughs> What would stop me? What would keep me from being baptized? And this is only in the New King James, by the way. It's in brackets. And Philip said, if you believe with all your heart, you may. So he's trying to make a distinction. I mean, so one thing, you can believe it up here in your in your head. But do you believe this from the heart? Okay, and that was the question. If you believe with all your heart, you may. And he replied, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. So that was a declaration, public declaration, like we just heard. Then he ordered the chariot to stop. Whoa. And both Philip and the eunuch went down into the water, and he baptized him. When they came up out of the water, the Spirit of the Lord carried Philip away, and the eunuch did not see him any longer, but he went on his way rejoicing. And we know from history where he ended up, don't we? In Africa. Yeah, and brought the gospel there apparently uh, he's one of the means by which the Coptic church exists uh, to this day so thank God for that so there's some water <laughs> what does stop you from being baptized well maybe you said I'd like to just get in on the action as well but there's a condition there's, it's terms and conditions apply you must believe you must believe not just that Jesus died but he died for you Paul, yeah. in writing 1 Corinthians, says uh, Christ died for our sins, according to the Scripture. You must be able to say that he died for your sins yeah. personally. Not just that he died in a general sense, but he died for my sins. Right. He took my place. Uh, he died and rose again for my benefit. Yeah. And I am justified through faith. Now, we don't have all the theology the moment that we get born again. All we know is, like I said the other night, I was blind, now I see. But now that I see, I see my need for repentance. I see my need to put my faith in Christ. And now by doing that, I'm following in steps of obedience. And the step of obedience of Christians is identifying first publicly with Christ. The public testimony, I think that was the Timothy one, wasn't it? And also what your sister Amy said there about publicly acknowledging before witnesses uh, that you are a follower of Jesus Christ. And there's not only the public testimony of people here, the church, but also God and the angels. Yes. Amen. Amen. So praise God. Now, one last thing from me. I have to go and get changed into trunks. Okay? And he's come prepared. He wore his all through church. <laughs> and the ladies are going to get changed as well. But while we're going and doing that, may I suggest our brother and sister from the United States, Wyoming, who have had a ministry in Syria to Muslims, uh, or whatever you want to talk about, just while we go away, why don't you share with people here uh, something of your own work or testimony? Amen? I'll start this off, because my wife is anxious talking in front of people. So. <laughs> my name is Tucker. This is my wife, Annie. Our last name is Hamilton, so you can think about wherever that comes from. Um, we got married in February of 2023, so we haven't been married very long. We're expecting our first little one here in November. Hey. Uh, we live in Wyoming. We work on our, we, our owner's fourth generation cattle rancher Whoa. and farmer. So a little background about us. And so when I met Annie, she had just got back from uh, four years in Lebanon where she was involved with an organization ministering to Muslims. And so she has some that's background on that, I guess. <laughs> I'll let her talk about it. Some more. <laughs> yes, so um, God led, led me to Lebanon. Um, yeah, so I lived there for just over four years. And then after that, started doing short-term trips back and forth and took him on a trip there. 
Um, but just to encourage you all that God is doing amazing things, and there are so many, there are thousands of Muslims coming to Christ. Wow. And so every time I go to a baptism, I'm reminded of the baptisms I saw in the Middle East of wow. people yeah. coming to Christ. And just the joy. There's so much joy. And, and the joy of um, walking through discipleship with them and seeing their lives be transformed through the power of Christ. And the persecution um, that some of them face, but that they still, they still stand strong. Yeah. And even when it's family members that are out to, to kill them or yes. harm them in some way. Um, they still, with joy, share the gospel with, with those family members. Mm. Sometimes those family members come to Christ, mm. um, but they share with their, with their neighbors, their community, wow. and it's just such a joy to see them bring so many, wow. uh, so many others to Christ. Mm. And so it's been such a joy to be a part of that in the discipleship. Yes. I'll tell you about some of the things that I remember about the things that stuck out to me. We, we met this guy named Mazin who lives in Lebanon, and he actually had to flee from Syria, actually, when he became a believer. He had to flee from Syria because his family, his own mother, put out a kill order on him wow. because that would re regain honor for the family is if they were able to, to kill him. And so he can never go back to Syria where his family is. He has kids in Lebanon now, and one of them is not a believer, and she has tried to poison the family because wow. then she can go back to Syria. So this is the kind of persecution they face from their own families. And so just like the original disciples, they have given up everything to follow Jesus. Yeah. Wow. And that's just, wow. that's amazing to me. Yeah. yeah. And so, uh, so this man, he, he just continues to, he's just a powerful uh, witness for the gospel wherever he goes. Wherever we go. With, with joy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we, we would go with him and he would just start going and we're like, all right, you know. <laughs> so I told him that I wanted to tour some agriculture stuff because I, I like agriculture. <laughs> yeah. And so he takes us to a dairy. And the dairy, the, the guy at the dairy doesn't speak English, so he's kind of helping translate. She's our translator. Mazin doesn't speak English, so I don't speak uh, Syrian. And so Arabic, we just, so there's a whole whole thing. She speaks all of it. She's tried to translate for me and translate for them as well. And so we were touring the dairy, and then Mazin gets right into his testimony. He spends probably an hour and a half talking to the, the main, the manager at the dairyman about his testimony. So that's, that's just fun to see. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and so it's, it's very encouraging and just also convicting, you know, like to have that be just a way of life where we just share the gospel and share the hope that we have within us. And so I just think of Ephesians 2, uh, verse 8, where it says, uh, for, now that I'm in front of you, I've been nervous, uh, for, uh, it is by grace that you've been saved, that you've been saved <laughs> through faith, <laughs> and this is not of yourselves, so we can't boast. You know, yes. it's, it's a, a gift of God. So, yes. so praise God for that. Yes. Amen. Amen. Thank you, everybody, for your hospitality. <laughs> we appreciate it. Yes. So we need to turn around and um, I, th I don't know, the grass is wet, but you don't need to take the chairs down there. I think we just got around the pool. Just waiting for the ones to come out. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Horses. Yeah, we do horses. Horses and dirt bikes. Yeah. I do a little roping. Yeah. A little bit. Is that the Yeah. I'm not very good at it. I have a, I have a brother in law who's better at it. Yeah, yeah, very good. I'd say one at a time. Hey Benjamin, I'm with you. Come this way. Come this way. Benjamin. Let's see. So, Kia, um, based, this is now based on your personal testimony, which you heard earlier, and on your um, your public testimony of faith in Jesus Christ, that today, the uh, 16th of June, 2024, baptized you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. In the name of the Father. Well, put your, do you want to hold your nose? Yeah. If I do, I go for it. Okay. Hold your nose. 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 Okay, so Eddie? Yeah, so Shay, we've heard your testimony today, right? And before these public witnesses and before our Lord Jesus Christ in heaven and all the angels, you say that you've accepted Jesus Christ as your Savior. He has forgiven your sins. So now we're going to baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah! I <laughs> 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 
said it to me. Is that a wet suit? It's a wet Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. oh, well. Oh, well. Oh, well. Oh, well. Oh, well. Oh, well. Okay, Mike. Now, this is Amy. Amy. Yeah. Okay, so it's important. Just take some support. Okay, so Amy, what a, what a powerful testimony today. Yeah. We heard that and we can really sense it and feel it as well. Mm -hmm. And so, this is the moment we've been waiting for, you've been waiting for. So, um, because your public testimony and your admission or confession of Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Um, your hands up there. Okay, so. Amy, in the name of the, in, in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, we baptize you. Amen. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Oh, Amy, is there anybody else over here? Anybody else? Last call. Okay. Right. Okay. Pool is open. <laughs> Bye.